Hey guys, I'm back with another video from the Startup Founder interview series. I'm joined by Simon. Simon is going to talk a little bit about his startup journey. So um, Simon, could you tell us a bit about who you are and where you're from? Yeah, sure. Hello everybody. Hi, um, my name is Simon Tafula. Um, as Andre mentioned, I'm the founder of a startup called Trendy People. Trendy People spelled with an I. Um, so just a quick uh, story about myself. Uh, my name is Simon. I'm from Birmingham in the United Kingdom, not in the US of A. <laughs> and um, I've come into this world of startups that is, is, is really interesting because uh, my journey begins uh, in Birmingham and I'm now in London uh, speaking to Andre and I've got to meet lots of incredible people on this journey. So. Um, the key thing with me here is to really share my story and to share the journey in itself because I believe that the key, there's plenty of key lessons that we can all learn from not just you know launching a startup but actually from um, the series of events of developing one and with the people that you meet with the people that you work with so um, I'm really here to tell you about that. This is the very beginning. This is an exclusive. You're getting a beginning of the story. We, we, don't, we do not know how it's going to end, but eventually we know that something will happen. And so I'm just here to share that story. What inspired you to create a startup? So it all begins with a story. Um, I was spending some time with some friends. Um, I, was, I was visiting some friends, three girls, they live together and they loved watching this reality TV show called America's Next Top Model. Now, while I was sat there with them watching it, what was really interesting to me as an average ordinary guy was that, um, first of all, these girls didn't feel they were pretty enough to be on her show. And that really struck me, that really struck a chord with me because I believe that each and every single person has something unique and beautiful about them that makes them stand out as an individual. It was in that instant that I realized that there was a problem with the fashion industry in its current form. So the fashion industry and media currently and traditionally has always promoted this distorted image of beauty. It's a problem that every single person knows. Everyone talks about it, but no one has comprehensively ever done anything about it. And it was in that moment that I realized there's a problem that needs to be solved. So, so what stage would you say you're at in your startup journey? So at the moment, I've gone through the initial stage of trying to unsuccessfully pitch and get investment from loads of different avenues around the country. And that's been really difficult, but I've learned some key lessons in that. And the key lessons are that, first of all, you know, on top of having a good idea, you have to have a team around you. Um, and that's the stage which I'm at. I've, I'm at the stage where I'm now building a team that has the right skill sets to then develop the, the product, the, the idea, and get it out there to the general market. And uh, it's been challenging, but I've just about found a team, created a team. And as this series go, goes on, you guys will find out a bit more about how, um, how who, who is in that composition of that team and, and exactly what, what it is that they're doing. But um, I believe that I've been able to secure a team, incredible, incredible people with incredible skill sets. And I believe that we can take that forward now to the next level, which is now building the minimum viable product and introducing our brand to the general public. Great. So we plan to follow your journey. It'll be interesting to see what kind of challenges and stuff you have along the way, how you overcome some of those challenges. Yeah. Um, you spoke a little bit about some of the things you've learned yeah. and potentially some of the um, characteristics that are required to get you to the next level. Yeah. Could you talk about what you think some of the um, essential characteristics are for someone like yourself who wants to run your kind of startup? Yeah. Um, it's really interesting and that's a really good question because there's so many characteristics that are needed as an individual. Um, I think the first key thing I'd really say is that as a person you really have to ask yourself and you have to be really honest with yourself. Why are you doing what you're doing in terms of if you have a startup project, are you doing it just for the fame because it's cool and trendy for you to be an entrepreneur? Or are you doing it just for, you know, for the money? Or are you genuinely trying to solve a problem and make this world a better place? And that, that is the first thing before you, you think about the business or anything. Be honest with yourself. 
Am I ready? I always say in the startup world, you know, in, in the corporate world, CEO means chief executive officer. In the, in the startup world, that means chief everything officer. <laughs> you're basically the chief working officer, the chief doing officer, the chief financing officer, the chief working, you're the chief everything. Yeah. Are you ready to work 100 hours every single week? You know, are you ready to quit a 38 hour job and then work 100 hours a week for literally no pay and nothing? Do you honestly believe you're solving a problem, making this world a better place? So honesty is really important. Um, I like um, a strategy called PIC, so P-I-C, which stands for persistent, insistent, and consistent. You essentially have to be as persistent as possible. Go after what you want, go after your dreams, but no one is gonna hand this to you on a plate. You've got to knock on doors, you can't be scared of rejection. You have to ask people, you have to tell people, you have to really, really believe in yourself, and you really have to project that belief by really going after people that you think will help you and bring your idea forward. So you have to be persistent, you also have to be insistent. You have to insist on remaining and staying the course of this journey. You, you have to insist on doing what the core value, what, you know, what the core value of your product is all about, which is solving a specific problem. And do not get distracted by the things. Do not get distracted by people that tell you, oh, you can't do this. No. If you genuinely believe you're solving a problem and making this world a better place, then just stay the course. And then you have to be consistent. Be consistent in the way you present yourself. Be consistent in constantly, you know, again, pursuing people and resources that you think will advance your cause. And sometimes you just have to have a bit of patience as well because things won't exactly happen in the way you want them to happen. Um, you have to be willing to learn. There's plenty to learn. Um, there's lots of things. I went to business school. I went to law school. There's plenty of things they don't teach you in law school and business school that you will learn, you know, in the startup world. And that involves attending workshops. That attends, you know, watching videos, TEDx videos, reading books, uh, you know, meeting lots of people at meetup events. So really put yourself out there because essentially in the beginning you are the brand. You have to be the brand because nobody else knows. And nobody else is as passionate about you as, as, as you, you know you are about your product or service. So, you know, be patient, be willing to learn, reach out to people, and evangelize. Essentially, just be the person blowing your own trumpet. Write a blog, uh, you know, do some interview videos and, you know, get to meet people and put yourself out there out of your comfort zone. Because that's what it's going to take for your idea to get recognition, for you to get recognition, and ultimately for you to be successful. Mm. Yeah. So where do you see your startup in five years time? I'd love to see Trendy People as a platform, as the go-to platform for people to discover, you know, to share and discover trending fashion around the world. And it should be the platform that empowers people, um, you know, to earn revenue and, you know, to, to empower themselves in terms of changing um, you know, their, their work skills and obviously, you know, sharing their skill set is key. But essentially, in five years' time, the go-to hub in terms of the fashion space, so the social marketing fashion space, the, the social fashion space, we want to own that space. We want to be the go-to platform uh, that empowers people to share, discover fashion, but also to, you know, to earn revenue and recognition. Wow, sounds like a great journey to be on. Yeah. What would you say the scariest thing about your startup journey is? Again, the scariest thing is the, be the dream is so massive, it's, it's huge. I mean, you know, they always say if your dream does not scare you enough, then it's not big enough. So the scariest thing is, you know, we, you know, I'm doing this, you know, on a basis of a number of assumptions, assumptions that people will actually be interested in, uh, you know, in solving this problem with me, will be interested in using this product. And you just never know what will happen. It's just the fear of unknown, you know, it's just, we, we do not know what's going to happen. So it's just a very uncertain journey, uncharted territory. And I guess that's the scariest thing. However, I'm given hope that, because we live in a world which is, you know, essentially gravitating towards social, towards mobile, and uh, towards genuine, um, you know, startups and companies that are actually solving real problems, that are empowering people. And, you know, I believe that, you know, what we can achieve is much bigger than what scares us. So the dream is much bigger than what would be scary about this. So 
Yeah, I guess the, you know, the scary thing to ask the question is the uncharted territory, the unknown. Okay. Fear of the unknown yeah. So what's the best thing? Um, again, just like I said, the best thing is having that satisfaction that we're going to empower people. We're going to change people's lives. We're going to make this world a better place and leave it in a better place and a better way than we found it. And I think that's, that's the key thing. It's about challenging the status quo. It's about taking on the big boys, taking on the big fashion industry and the, you know, the big fashion media and really just putting the power back into the hands of the ordinary person that you know, has, has skill sets, you know, has a passion that they can share with the world and make the world a better place. What advice would you give to anyone else who has an idea for a startup? I think one of the biggest concerns for somebody that has an idea is, first of all, they're always scared. I mean, I, I meet lots of people on the startup scene. They're scared of sharing their ideas because they think someone is going to steal it, quote unquote. But no one can really steal your idea because, first of all, you have, we all have different personalities. We all have different networks. We all have different skill sets. So it's the way you actually execute the idea that will separate you from everybody else. And my advice would be, and it's been scientifically proven, that you should share your idea. Go out there and talk to people. Um, you know, and share your idea as much as possible because what you will find is you meet the right people with the skill sets, the resources. Even if they do not have the skill sets and resources, they will, do, they will they'll recommend you to, to people um, that are out there that could take your idea to the next level. So all I would say, and, and this is, you know, something I've learned from my own personal journey is really go out there, evangelize, tell people about what you believe, tell them about what your purpose is, tell them about what the cause is. Uh, as one of my favorite uh, authors by the name of Simon Sinek says, it's about selling your purpose. It's about selling your cause. It's about really inspiring people to come on a journey with you because, you know, People's attention is distracted by lots of other things. They really want to get involved in things they really care about. So yeah, so share your idea, tell people about it. And then if you're not sure about what you're doing and you're, not, you know, you're in between, you're, you won't really persuade people to do it. So you've got to be passionate about it, share your idea, find the right resources. And, um, and yeah, that, if that will happen for you. Cool. Yeah. Well, it's been great speaking to you. Um, we'll be following closely along with your progress. It'll be very interesting to see um, what kind of progress we made the next time we meet. Thanks a lot for joining us, Simon. Thank you, and I look forward to sharing the journey as I continue. Thank you.